In today's video, I'm going to share some practical tools for academic stress management. So this is part two. If you haven't watched our previous video, make sure to watch that so that you as a parent or a teenager, if you're a student in college or school, make sure you watch that video to understand the pressure of academic stress and how that is impacting your mental health. So now let's get to the practical tools. What can you do as a parent? What can you apply in your own life or help your teenager apply in their life? Maybe you want to also teach your child this from a very young age. Practical tool number one, focus on performance goals rather than outcome goals. So outcome goals are the goals that focus on the end product, the final result. Whereas performance goals acknowledges achievements and growth along the way, regardless of the outcome. So maybe your child did not get that distinction for math. Well, maybe they improved their mark with 5%. Maybe they have been applying a new study method successfully. Or maybe what they have been gaining is some valuable character traits like optimism and discipline. Remember to not put so much pressure on the end result alone. Celebrate and acknowledge all the achievements on the way to these outcome goals, to the success. And you can do this as a family by having small celebration parties where you set a time every week. Maybe you choose a day in the week celebrating the victories of the past week and also setting new performance goals for the week to come. Practical tip number two. Remember to emphasize that mental health is just as important as good grades, sports or other achievements. As a parent, it is very important that you be very clear about the messages you give your children. If you emphasize and model that you value spending time and activities on mental health care, that will be greatly encouraging to them, not just putting focus on good grades, sports and other achievements. This is especially important if you have a child that suffers or struggles with anxiety or depression. Letting them know that you value their mental health journey is very encouraging to your stressed child. Sometimes you can tell them and teach them things like taking a mental health day from school is okay. Just like we sometimes need to take a break from work when we are feeling ill, your child needs to do the same if they feel they need to take a breath. And if that means taking a day, that's okay. Practical tip number three, using a strength-based approach is extremely valuable. So the Newport Institute's Learning Lab applies this strength-based approach to teach students life skills without the stress that comes with academic pressure. This is especially helpful for right brain children stuck in a left brain school system. And this is actually a topic from a book and also a topic for a whole nother video. But the Newport Institute focuses on the gifts, the abilities, and also the interests of these students, focusing on what you have, what's right with you, instead of where you fall short. As a family, you can sit and discuss each other's interests, your gifts, your abilities, and set specific individual goals around these. This will be greatly encouraging to your child as they no longer have to struggle and feel frustrated to reach the goals that school, society, or maybe you as a parent set for them. And maybe those goals are your predetermined idea of success and not your child's true interest and ability. Practical tip number four. Remember, you are the parent of your teenager, adolescent, or young adult. You remain mom and dad. And no matter how antagonistic your young teenager, adult, child may appear as they go through the different phases and stages of growing into independent adults, you know best. My mom always says, a mom knows. You know mom and dad. But if you find yourself unsure, talk to your child. Ask them if they are coping. Have an honest, sincere, caring conversation about their fears, about academic and other achievement pressures. Let them know that you are there to listen. And these conversations will only truly work if you create a consistent, safe space without judgment, mom and dad. Remember, non-judgmental space where your child can feel safe to share their vulnerable selves. And maybe you are the one that is struggling with this and you might have to have that honest conversation with yourself. These four practical steps are a good start. And yes, there's a lot going on in schools and you might not know the detail of your child's every worry, but just letting them know that you are there to listen. Remember mom and dad, without judgment, but there to listen to help and support will be a good first step to comfort their anxious teenage hearts. And if you still don't feel equipped to do this alone, you can reach out. 
We can help you identify some of the gifts, the talents, abilities of your child. We can also offer you some parental guidance or you can reach out to a counsellor in your area. I am just one of the many counsellors available to speak to. And then teenagers, as you find yourself surrounded by tests, exams and school stuff, remember to take care of yourself. Mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally and not just academically. Until next time.